Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, the city of sin, or America's Playground. Whatever you want to call this stretch of casinos in the southern Nevada desert, comes a story about me. My name is Murad, but my friends, they call me MK. You guys could call me MK, because I want to invite you to be my friend and tell you a little story about me. I was born back in Las Vegas on February 17, 1988, to two Moroccan immigrants, Maurice and Aisha Kadmeri. My parents were about 30 years apart, but that didn't stop them from being spontaneous and chasing their love. Thank God they did, or I wouldn't be here. They would eventually leave Morocco and their surroundings of camels and the stench of leather making yards to the glittering lights of Las Vegas, Nevada. So where buildings are towering tall, where in the same day you could go from Egypt to Paris and still have time to shop at the mall. They say your dreams could all come true right here in this town. Some people come with their last $10 and leave out millionaires. This is a make you break you town. Fortunately, I was born here, so I came up a little different. Whoa, are you right? Hey, what up? This is Chris here. We're on Chad Mary on top of the Riviera Hotel and Casino. That's beautiful Riviera. Coming straight out from California. It's a view of the Las Vegas Boulevard. Very beautiful. We're about to go take a look at Norman Kaplan number one shoe sales. Jennifer Lopez is down there reporting. Jennifer, are you there? Oh, I didn't think so. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Drop and Bombs, and today folks, I got a real treat for you. It's old M to the K. Now, this says his name is Murad Kadmiri, also known as M to the K. Now, if you guys never heard of this dude, you better look him up at M to the K. Literally spelled that way too. M to T-H-A-K. Almost like M to Thack. But he's a real treat nonetheless. Welcome, buddy. How did I first discover M to the K? Well, for me to tell you that, I gotta tell you a little bit of my backstory. My name's Jordan Tower. I did music videos. Uh, we started off, I started off doing music videos, probably as far as you would remember, probably started with Cormega and Mob D, who were just doing music videos. And then I started doing a DVD called the Come Up DVD, and out of that DVD came to the Minaj, Mano on there, Lil Wayne, a bunch of stuff. A lot of artists came out of that. Prodigy of Mob Deep and I were friends. We started doing this DVD together before we went to jail. And he had some type of new type of service where he filmed me on it and it ended up on a site called World Star. It was just a nothing site. And they said some stuff about me on there in the title where I hit them up and corrected them. And when I went on the site, I realized they were ripping all my DVD videos. All the videos from the Come Up DVD were on there, but we make money off those videos. But then I thought, like the DVD era is ending. This, the biggest site at that time was called On Smash. World Star hadn't really made a splash yet. They were missing something. What they were missing was exclusive content. So me and Q talked for a while. To the page where you're number one in the power 30 list and just show us that. Let's get that zoom Man, in on that photo. That. That's right. Number one. We'll start hip hop. Came up with a deal and we worked together and I gave, I just started using all the rap connects that I had already from DVDs and everything. And I started having it exclusive on Worldstar. So you had to go to Worldstar to watch these videos. No other sites out there. There was so many of these websites. The Worldstar thing was starting to work. It was like 2007, 2008, we were making a splash. And that's when I started to discover m to the k because I was on YouTube more. All my stuff was on the internet now. It wasn't doing DVDs in the street. It was like, everything was on the net now. At, you know, at night, I'd just be cruising through YouTube on my computer and I'd see this guy that's going in to buffets and Vegas and just interviewing people and just making fun of them. Just making fun of them right to their face. Hey, how's the food here? Hey, don't you know this shit's horrible? What? It's disgusting, the food here. No. no. Get out of my way. Move. We're going to talk to the manager right away. Doesn't work. Hey, ugly. How are you? 
Bye, thank you. Okay, get out of my way. All right, so we rated you guys a one star within our undercover. Call the security. They don't have security. See, she's a liar also. I, th I think at one point he was talking to, uh, he pretended he was working for cheaters. So how are you guys doing? Union Vision Television. I love the Como se Thank you. Como se ama. Are you cheating? Hey, hold on. Is this your husband? Uh, this husband. is your husband? <laughs> his wife is right here. We, hey, we have his wife right here. She's watching. Hey, why are you cheating on her? Hey. There he is. He's cheating on his wife. Hit me. Hey, cheating on your husband, huh? And he would go after people. It was the funniest thing ever. And this is before all the prank videos you see now. He started the whole prank video thing on YouTube. I was like, this guy's onto something. So I subscribed to his channel and I just kept tabs on him like from 2007 through 2008. And I even hit him up and I let him know like, yo, I like what you're doing, keep it up. He would somehow get a hold of like, fancy cars and ride around Vegas, he would, anything you could think of he was doing. M to the K. Look how we're about to roll out of here. We're about to roll out in a 2008 Blue Phantom. Yeah, we're looking good, like a million bucks, you know what I'm saying? Best driver in the United States right here. We hold it down. That's why you can see him with me. He would go to the Vegas Strip. He would go up to massage people. You know, the massage people that set up in malls and stuff. He would go up there and troll them. So this is a gangster massage in Vegas. And you see the back alignment, which is known from the spine up to the top, which will shoulder pad it right here into the mezzeranda. I love this. Rub that ass on the right. Uh, oh, I remember once he went to a uh, the mall. You know how they have the free samples? They had the whole tray, and he just kept doing the free samples until they had to, like, rock away with the tray. You don't think it's like a shot, though? No, not at all. Sir, you have a great night, sir. Because <laughs> he was eating basically a whole meal for free. Hey. Where are you guys okay? Right over there in the corner. Would you like to buy one? Hey, get over here. Funniest stuff. So, you know, I was making more money with just doing videos. You know, like we were putting on World Star. I was traveling more. People were flying me everywhere. So I was in LA. And at this time, I had a manager by the name. I told him, hey, I think you should expand. This guy, M to the K, is really funny, and all he needs is the right equipment to do better pranks. Like, he's onto something. And this is like 08, 09 right now, right? And M to the K show, I'm over here back, 2008 Magic Convention. You know, like, I was going to send him a plane ticket, but I was like, what if he doesn't get on the plane? You know, stupid. So I did the cheapest way possible to get him to LA. I sent him a bus ticket. <laughs> and he got on the bus, went to LA. The first time I met him, he met me at a video I was doing for a guy named Menace. And uh, a guy named Waxstar was his manager. And That's yeah. why. That's two times today. Fellas, we here. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm the first person to get Bow Wow and Soldier Boy out of wet. Come on, man. That boy's sharp. Man. And they dripped out the game. Which you've probably seen it. He's around Bow Wow and everything because I'm the game now. He showed up at that video and M to the K stayed on the road with me for months at that point after that. I just got to know him better, you know, like, and I, I said, hey, here's an opportunity where we're going to different cities and you can do pranks in different areas too. It came in handy too, because at that time, I was promoting something called Contour Liquor. So I throw it in videos. And sometimes we forget to get the shot for the video. We did a YG video. I think it was called Drunken High. There was this party scene, but we didn't get the link or the video, and that's the only way you get paid from a sponsor. There was this scene where like everyone was on like the kitchen counter. So I said, yo, MK, I'm gonna film you real quick. Just jump on my kitchen counter and just have the conjure liquor and he act like you're in a in, in like a house party. And he did that and we just cut it in. This, time, this is the time we were getting two chains hot. This one video, we needed someone to act like a cop. And so we, we MK played the cop real quick and act like he was arresting somebody. He would just jump in videos. Like he was, he was a team player. I discovered Anthony K. I'm the only head monster. Owner, creator, founder, 
of Monster Game. Uh, MK's talents are unbelievable. MK is the biggest bullshitter on the planet. And he can bullshit with integrity. That's uh, a very unusual talent. So every word that comes out of his mouth, listen, is bullshit. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Uh, me or him? No, you. Tell us who you are. Executive founders of uh, Uber. Sir, give me your phone number. I can reach you when I have a problem. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Wanted to give all the drivers what you said? Free insurance. What do you think? I love that free insurance. There he is. Yeah. Every word that comes out my mouth, right? One set of tires a year. Free. Wow. I'm generous with the shareholders' money. Don't worry about it. And he says, I'm after I got to know MK after a few months, I was like, all right, let's put some money behind this. So I took a few thousand dollars. We bought these like lavalier mics because he was missing mics and like zoom lenses and stuff like that. So we kind of invested in a couple things. So him and his friend Jay Taken. I'm at M to the K at school. M to the K always been popular. Basically walking home from school. Well, on the way home, this nigga went to a hospital, stole a golf cart, nigga, and basically got in trouble. The nigga got caught up the next time we seen him at school or whatever. Damn, everybody was like, like you know, going crazy, like, dog, you went, you could Kimberly, you stole the golf cart, all that, blah, 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 blah. He was popular at school, he, used to, he just had that glow, that energy, man, like, you know what I mean? Like, niggas knew it wasn't a joke. Like, he was funny and shit, but it wasn't a joke. I flew Jay Taken to Miami, because we were going to be in Miami for like two weeks, doing a bunch of videos. I know the can't stand me. Fly me on the jet, I'm on my way to Miami. He started fucking with you and Tyrone. He sent us to Miami and we were supposed to do him to the K show. He came and then they they were going around Miami, but they weren't really getting any footage. We did him to the K show. When we went back and checked the footage, the sound was fucked up because we used wireless mics. So then we were like, fuck, it's something to do. And we took our Vegas talent to, to South Beach. <laughs> they were like going through like the Fountain Blue, hitting licks in Fountain Blue. Like these guys were savage. I mean, M2K is the type of guy that'll go into a hotel. Uh, he'll have full access to the hotel by the first day. He'll have free Wi-Fi. Uh, he'll, hey, if you needed a second room, he got that, you know, cause he'll have the master key already, you know. Uh, you don't got to worry about paying for snacks and water. He got that too. He'll figure that out. He's always, this is how he operated in Vegas. You know, like he'd finagle his way into situations. So him and Jay Taken, it just turned into like, just nothing happened. Yo, what's up? This is Mikey Hayes. You going to see your mama twerking. 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 You It's the first time I ever seen M to the K on the internet. Uh, I thought to myself, this little kid is going to jail uh, every day. <laughs> every video. Get the fuck out of the store. Oh. 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 Uh, but funny shit though, like really edgy, funny stuff that you could respect. You could tell you he really wanted to be where he is right now because he didn't hold no punches. If you don't know him, he's the first person ever on the internet. I remember being on Wild and Out every day on TV and he would say, you still need the internet, man. You still gotta get an internet presence, which I still don't have. <laughs> he treated the internet like TV because he was definitely the first person I ever seen really working the internet and really on the internet. Do some Googling. The guy's a legend, man. You know what I'm saying? Matchings and Ferraris and all of that, you know. Get that from his big bro. You know what I'm saying? M to the K, legend. So I first met MK um, 12 years ago. It was 12 fucking years ago. I've known this guy for 12 years. Um, I was driving down the shoot with my friend Marcus Ekvik. We had just come back from a shoot and I got a phone call from a lady named Leah Blewett, who was the owner of this magazine called Paul Magazine. 
and she goes, Brian, I need you to come down here and shoot uh, this video with uh, Soldier Boy and M to the K. Come, come meet them. And she was kind of, you know, she was she was cool and hip. I think she called him M to the Kizzle. I said, M to the Kizzle, that's crazy. I gotta meet this guy, I gotta meet Soldier Boy. And so, um, at first I was like, man, they were so far away from the shoot. But my friend Marco knew who M to the K was and he goes, no, we gotta go to this shoot, we gotta go. So uh, we uh, we drove down there and we ended up shooting this behind the scenes video for Fall Magazine, which still exists online. That, that uh, pretty much explains a lot. <laughs> My name is Sogati. I remember the first time I met him to the K. I actually got a prank call. He hit me up and said, oh, is this Sofari? And I said, nah, it's Sogati. He said, Sofari, yeah, what's up, Sofari? And then I actually saw him at a studio. Shit, and I go, I'm so I'm Sogati, nigga, that's my name. And he goes, nah, I know who you are. He goes, Prez that hit me up and told me to prank your ass. Get money, get money's what my mama taught me. Her keys are so gaudy off that Bob Marley. When I first met MC the K, um, we were in Vegas. The magic show in Vegas with Yums, the clothing line and shoe line Yums. We had just got with those people. This is Poison Body, SOD Money Gang, shout out MC the K. We bumped into MC the K, like he was, you know, we were seeing him on um, World Star doing the videos when he walk up to people to walk up to celebrities and called him somebody else's name. He would walk up to Diddy and be like, what's good, 50? What's good? If Diddy be like, nah, nigga, I'm not 50, I'm Diddy. Hey, fuck these brothers at the end. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 2008 out here in Vegas. You know, we do what we do. All right, you heard it here first. M to the K Show, Las Vegas, 2008, baby. Holding it down, let's roll. He had access to all the, the big hotels, all the events. I don't know how he was doing it. Cause think about it, this was at least 10, 11, 12 years ago. So he was young with all these other super, super stars like Diddy. But like, he was there. Look at me, SLD money game. Oh boy, is he with Paris, baby? M to the K, Ray J, knockout, baby. Yeah. M to the K show, what to do, baby? It's the champ power wow. M to the motherfucking K. It's your motherfucking homeboy, young boy. And shout out to M to the K show. We do it big. Is that all of a sudden MK, M to the K started to want to rap when we came back to, because we were based in Atlanta at the time. I had moved from New York to Atlanta. Now, if you don't know, M to the K, before he met me, he had met Soldier Boy in Vegas. I think he recovered Soldier Boy's chain. You know what I think is dope about you? Is I, I don't know if a lot of people know this story. Um, you had an artist you were working with, uh, M to the K from Vegas. Very funny guy. Yeah. But the story that I heard was you had left your chain somewhere in Vegas. It was in a hotel room or at a party or something and dude got it. And instead of anybody would have got that chain and, been gone with it. and hit a lick on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He got in contact with you, got you your jewelry back and that's why you signed him. Man. And that's something that's like, and like, look, Funny fucking dude though. I fuck with dude tough. Like his skits on he was kinda early on a lot of the YouTube pranks and shit. Right. Yeah. But when I heard that, I was like, yo, that's some real ass shit. Just like as a gesture, like, yo, I appreciate you for keeping it a stack and giving me my shit back. Like, I feel like that's some shit that like a lot of people don't have those kind of principles anymore, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, we keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Like that's some real that's some real shit. So don't stand on it. The chain situation. MC the K, he when we first met him, he was cool, you know. But when he really got cool with everybody or with Soldier just specifically, I guess, um, was when we, we left and he just so happened to find Soldier's chain in the hotel room. His word, the word is yours, chain. It's like, it's a big ass chain about that big. It was dope. But I love this nigga with all my heart. MCK, SOTMG, this is my motherfucking artist. Man. It's the motherfucking man. Y'all bet you know it. Shit, Soldier Boy hit up M to the K and wanted MK to film for him when he came to Vegas at Jet Nightclub or whatever. It's your boy Soldier Boy, tell him I'm live up in this bitch. Shout out to the whole Las Vegas. Shout out to the whole Jet Nightclub. Soldier left. He left his chain. MK found it, called Soldier, and was like, yo, we was already basically gone. He was like, yo, I found your chain. Comes to the K, got it. 
And uh, I guess the soldier hit him up and flew him to LA and was like, yeah, what you want for the chain? He didn't want no money for it. And that nigga MK was like, shit, I don't want nothing. I just want to be down, you know? Put me on, it's a DMG. So that was real. Like, I can't even lie, that was real. Cause he could've came up, you know what I'm saying? Or he could've got some clout, you know what I'm saying? I got soldier chain, but you know, he didn't do that, which was dope. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Keezy. That Soldier Boy left the chain, and that's how we met Soldier Boy. I guess after that, that nigga just, he never came back. So for like five years. Once he did that, MK was in. Like he was locked in, and he never went home. You know what I'm saying? He was just side by side. SOD money game, MC the K. You know what I'm saying? SOD MG, MC the K. MC the K, SOD MG. SOD gang, Keezy getting dumb. I'm rich, bitch. To the keys on Vegas resident. I'm hopping out of fat nigga cause I do it big. Real big. We signing out. SODMG, 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 SODMG for SODMG for life, nigga. SODMG forever till the death. Six foot three. Sitting up on your team. I think because of his connection with Soldier Boy and Soldier Boy's fame, this is what made M to the K kind of want to rap when his real talent to me was being a prankster. Like an actor, cause like to be a prankster, you kind of, a really good prankster, you have to be able to act. You have to have acting ability. And M to the K had acting ability. He went off with Soldier Boy and Soldier Boy would like, it seemed like Soldier Boy would kind of just, you know, like he's part of Soldier Boy's crew now. You know, he's not being M to the K and that's what disappointed me. He wasn't M to the K with Soldier Boy. He was Soldier Boy's friend that's helping Soldier Boy. So he's filming things for Soldier Boy. He's helping Soldier Boy with, uh, you know, social media. He's, he was very beneficial to Soldier Boy. He's giving Soldier Boy ideas. He was, you know, part of Soldier Boy's crew, but he wasn't. He was bigger than that. M to the K was his own personality. His own. He, he was a star. My name is Sammy Joyna. I'm from San Francisco, California, the creator of From Your Understanding. I worked at YouTube from 2007 to 2012. I remember seeing M to the K all over the YouTube charts. Going through YouTube from the beginning, this was the first, first original series. M to the K had the best pranks in the world. Look at this machine. Let's learn a little bit more about it. So tell us a little bit about like what you can do. Yes, sir. Does your goofy ass work here? I, I work here. We heard people have been flocking to you guys like ants on a Martian. Awesome. This is a Servi. It's a robot that serves food and it takes literal, the heavy work off um, servers and waiters. Well, amazing technology. You're the first people in their field to think about getting rid of the waiters, the bad waiters. We're just taking away the heavy work from them. They end well, up- Well, those plates don't weigh that much. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Everyone else copied him. From the beginning, his authority patrol, which was a, a big launch for him, was popping through the charts. I was always excited seeing his new videos, what to come, what's new in his life, what's what's the next new prank that he's gonna be starting. We shadow banned his channel. Shadow banning in the context of social media or a site like YouTube is when your posts stop showing up for people, but you're still able to post. You haven't been banned, you're still using the site like always, but perhaps they've flagged your account in a way that you don't know about and now your posts aren't being seen by as many people, and the only way that anyone will find your posts is if they're directly looking for them. It wasn't advertisement friendly, and that's how we make money on YouTube. After I left YouTube, I had to meet M to the K. I flew out to M to the K to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, pulled up with the tie, hella funny, giving out good vibes. He was viral before viral was even a thing. My name is Jeff Bloom. I met MK back in 2008, 2009 over at Interscope Records. A soldier boy brought him in and I was like, oh shit, I remember this guy. I seen him on YouTube. MK was the first to do everything he's done. I remember when soldier boy bringing him in the office, everybody at Interscope loved MK's personality. He was making everybody crack up and laugh before people even started realizing who he actually was when he'd show up. MK would finesse his way around the office. He would just get deals on his own. He didn't rely on anybody for anything. I, I can pretty much say we copied MK's uh, formula with the record label on how he got deals. Because he would just create them. And all of a sudden he'd say, hey, we have Adidas coming, we have this brand coming, we have this brand coming. Hey, so-and-so's gonna be showing up, Rice Gum's gonna be stopping by. 
Whoa, what? Okay. My name is Rice Gum. I'm a YouTuber. People try to downplay like, oh, it's just kids making videos online. But I look around, not just at myself, but at other YouTubers. Other YouTubers are working so hard. It's like a dedication. Other jobs, you just kind of wake up and go with the flow and then you do your eight hours. Like, okay, I'll get my paycheck. YouTube, you're in control. You're your own boss. And the amount of blood and energy and love that you put into it is kind of what you get out. He's not your average human being. When MK left the label, I pretty much left it with him. We've developed a friendship throughout the years that I even still do deals with in the current day. What the fuck is this all about, though? What? You read this already? No, I didn't. I need you to. What? <laughs> Did you read it? Or... No, I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read it? No. Oh my god, this guy's a dumbass. All right, well, can we look at it real quick? Okay, go ahead, look at it. MK's worth ethic is like no one other. You know, when it comes to deals, he's always going to be there. He's always on time. He has, what I say the best thing, is a value. He has, he has value to the deals. We need 20 photos per week, 10 videos per week. That's for that, that's the 10 videos per week. Okay, and then number 11, I gotta read number 11 to you. The terms of this agreement and the rights of the parties hereto shall be governed exclusively by the laws of the state of Nevada without regarding its conflicts of law provisions. Yeah. Got that. So why did you have to read that? Not one specifically. Cut. Cut. I'm asking you. I'm one. asking you. Why did you say you have to read that line specifically? Because it was, it was only exactly what you did. No, no, no. We, no, it's part of. It's part of the line. Pick another line. line. Another one. Fucking weirdo. What? No, it's not. I've said hella deals. Hella deals. <laughs> There's always a time in the contract. Like I have to read this one out loud. It's sort of like a Miranda rights. We have to read this one. I know that. Yeah. So it always is some contract. There's no rental agreement or where they don't say nothing like this. If he has to read it, he has to read it. I gotta read number 18 for you, waiver. Okay. I like to hear dollar amount. He always comes with something bigger and better. Sometimes I like to tell him to stay where we're at and to keep doing what we're doing. He motivates me to do better on other things. We make tons of money, we make millions. We in it, and then that's you. All right, swag. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Did good. <laughs> yep, we're gonna be, uh, are you gonna come with us or are you gonna be at, where are you gonna be here? Yeah. Right, let's go. Tour. Have you seen his house in Las Vegas? flying at the Vegas CMK. We're kicking in a big ass mansion. He has all the nice cars. He's always showing me something new and cool. We have to get straight to soundtrack, do the show, and get to the airport straight after. This is the only one on the West Coast right now. Yo, so this is the Lucid. This is the fastest car in the fucking world. I can change the colors. How fast it go? It's the fastest car in the world. I heard about it. I never seen it. Plus, it's going for a job. Oh my God, this bitch is fast. <laughs> Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, man. <laughs> Here we go, straight away. Oh, shit! God. Oh, fuck! Hey, so be careful. Why, are you scared? No, Do scared. you see this bus down on my wrist? <laughs> Do you see, just tell me if you see the bus down on my wrist. Because if you see this bus down on my wrist, then you know I don't care what you're talking about. We're going to go fast. Look. <laughs> Pull some G's right there. This is all from God. Mikey bringing me some more big ass deals. We're gonna keep getting rich and we're gonna keep thanking God. مشاهدي 360 ترحبوا بكم في حلقه جديده من نايدا في هوليوود واللي من خلاله سنتعرفوا على حياه العديد من المغاربه الناشئين في امريكا والضيف ديالي اليوم تولد هنا في لاس فيغاس واصبح اشهر يوتيوبر مغربي في امريكا انه مراد قدميري. ام تي دي كي بيست تالنت از هيز بليف ان الله هيز بليف ان جاد على اول ذا كايوس يو مايت سي هيم دو وي جيت اون اور نيز اند براي سو اي ثينك ذاتس وات ميكس هيم اهيد اوف ذا كيرف از بليف ان جاد يو هاف تو بليف ان جاد سو اي ثينك ذاتس هيز بيست تالنت هو ملي دار هادشي في الاول انا كنت ما كنتش معاك
حتى كنقولي اش كدير يا ولدي ويلي هاد شنو حشومه حشومه حتى شتات شي ولا فهمتي ايوا دابا هو قلبو مزيان هاد الشيء اللي غنقول لك وعندو نيه انت فوق جيتي الامريكان انا جيت في السبعينات كتعرف هو العائله ديالو من الاولين اللي جاوا الامريكان This is like my old area. This is like where I used to be at. This is East Side Las Vegas. It's not the best part of town and it has changed. From when I used to live here, a lot of things have changed. This is Tropicana and Eastern. That Walgreens always been here. This Denny's used to be a bank. It used to be a bank called Bank of the West. I remember it got robbed like twice. Shouldn't put a bank there. Now we're coming up to like this is all my stomping ground. All this area. This is Viking Eastern. I literally live right here in this neighborhood. It's called Sunrise Villa 7. Memories. This is a pimo. Now look at me. Now I'm on the same. Hey, I used to ride the bus. I used to sneak on the same bus, this same bus route. And now I'm riding Rolls Royce down, drop the top. This is the earth on the fire like this. Still did it, and that means if I could do it, I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. I haven't scratched the surface of where I think I could go and what I want to do. But I think that um, anybody could do what they want to do. All I wanted to do was drive a Rolls Royce. I could drive a Rolls Royce all, every day if I want. I'm in a position where I could do it. I could go to the old high school. Putting into my old high school. When I was in this school, I already pulled up in the freshest car, paid for by myself. A uh, VIA MySpace.com promo, and the word influencer didn't exist back then. They thought I sold drugs. They didn't know what I did. Who didn't know me? But the teachers that knew me, the staff, my friends, they knew I was like doing shit on the internet. But they didn't know I was like a famous star on the internet because I also didn't want to let that many people know because I was also shy. Because these are my peer mates, I grew up with them. I tried to impress these people. Eventually, nobody. I didn't care. I'm the best now, so I'm pulling up to my school, still in the freshest whip. I'm pulling up in a Rolls Royce Dawn this time. Cause I'm rich. Everywhere I go, bitch, I'm stunting cause I'm rich. Hoes are on my dick cause it's nothing cause I'm rich. 3.6 on Insta, I'll fuck them cause I'm rich. Everybody know about being You've been icing since you was 17. You've been always fucking chasing niggas' dreams. And you've been rich, you didn't always kill the scene. The soldiers find you, you didn't win and murder shit. You went from SOD from Stunner shit. And you was broke, and now you hella rich. Sneaking on the bus, now you double R and fits. Hey, how you doing shit? Tell us how you did this, little kid. How you do this big shit? How the fuck who you with? Who the fuck did you sign to? Did you drop blood? Did you do this shit? Or just what did you? I'm a young rich nigga. I keep a pound on me, kid. I'm be keeping. I be smoking by hell of them trees. I'm a rich mansion here to stay marble floors, and I'm rich. I done win and fuck all your whores Cause I'm rich and I'm pocket fucking studded with hundreds And I'm rich when I hit the stage the hoes come in running And I'm rich pockets full of stuntings and hundreds And the bitch wanna come and see me I'm up and I'm up Cause I'm all came from nothing Yeah I'm rich Yeah this bitch all came from nothing Cause I'm rich I'm still the east side Las Vegas little boy Now I'm rich Now I'm rich but to be rich, you gotta start somewhere, and I started right there on my face. Valley High School starter, three years in a row. All right, baby, you know who I be. I'm the MK. Hey, give me a ball. I can remember it like yesterday. Yeah, just like that slam dunk. 
That's what I was doing. I was becoming popular all over the world. People are watching my videos. I created a name for myself. I'm dating the craziest, wildest girls now. Who would think just one click, uploading one video would stretch from my desk to across the world, back home to my country of Morocco? Can you imagine if I never clicked the upload button, if I never went out and filmed, never edited a video? Um, thank God I did. There's only one thing I could wish for right now, and I should have wished for it a long time ago. I just want to lose weight. I want to look good. I want to be more healthy. And I want to just be the best that I can be. That's it. Ladies, just go ahead. Take take a look at who you with, and then take a look at me. Just take take a look at it, and then look at me. It's your boy School School. Come to the case weight loss journey is just one of those things that you have to kind of see it to believe it. I mean, he just in a matter of three, four months was just shedding weight day after day after day. And he would call me and hit me up and say, I went for a run today, I'm riding a bike, I'm juicing, I'm eating clean. I mean, you would have thought that he was like training to fight like a Floyd Mayweather kind of fight. But uh, yeah, I mean, he lost a ton of weight. And It was an absolutely amazing weight loss journey um, and inspiring one. I mean, for anybody out there that needs to lose weight, go watch the way that he did it and shit. I mean, it, it was impressive. Let me right Tell right it so I don't know. Y'all get y'all flick real quick with the champion. Yeah. Got a roll. Hey, shit. Yeah. 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 My name is Michael Sean and I'm a record producer, a real estate developer, crypto enthusiast, investor in all things that make sense. So I remember when I first met M to the K, I had gone to a Soldier Boy's house. Keezy was living with Soldier Boy and we essentially developed a really good friendship. And every time I would go over there, it didn't matter if Justin Bieber was there, or if any of these superstars were there, I would go and kick it with Keezy and we'd have a good time and do business and you know, do what we do. And then after that, I mean, you know, he got successful. He got a lot of, a lot of money that was coming in, a lot of big cars, a lot of bottle popping, a lot of partying. Vegas and stuff. It's not one girl, two girls. I mean, his phone is just going ding, 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 ding. He doesn't even know who he's talking to half the time. Link up with M to the K, y'all both savages. I don't know if you guys realize, but M to the K broke up with his girlfriend. He's wilding out. The man got skinnier. He got skinny. He's killing it. He hasn't hit me up. You don't got time to hit me up no more. What are you guys thinking? I mean, every single night this guy M to the K had a different woman. I mean, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, different girl, different girl, different girl. I would go out and I would be in Vegas for three, four nights, you know, doing what I do out there. And he would say, hey, you want to grab dinner tonight? We go to Spago, we go to Nusseret, we go to all these places and night after night, different women. And I'm over here thinking to myself, sheesh, and I thought I did pretty well for myself, but M to the gay is just doing something that is unheard of. And I asked him, I said, how do you keep track of all of these women? He told me, he said, you know what, man? It is not easy and it is not a sport that everyone can be involved in. Detective 
detectives are investigating this robbery and a shooting that happened afterwards. A violent robbery right in the middle of the day caught on surveillance video and it's not the only one. Police say there have been several of these robberies in recent weeks, many of them during the daytime. One of the violent encounters captured on video. Surveillance video shows a man as a car stops in front of him. Two attackers jump out of the car, violently taking his valuables, including a Rolex watch. The vicious robbery happening around 4 in the afternoon. Three male suspects who demanded money and jewelry. The suspects then physically assaulted the victim. Suspects using multiple vehicles to follow victims after they leave stores and restaurants, then confronting them at gunpoint in isolated areas. The suspect then physically assaulted the victim before getting into a car and driving off. Investigators did not identify the victim. Police say the suspects in that incident escaped. Any information about these crimes, you should contact the LAPD. In 10 years, I see MK as one of the biggest comedians and producers of our time. He has, he has, he's so talented. So 10 years from now, where I see him, the guy I see him in acting in movies and stuff. In 10 years, I honestly either see M to the K doing movies. He's very good at becoming whoever he wants to be. You know, I see him to the K in 10 years doing big things. I think he's a bright guy. He's a really smart guy knows how to get himself involved with the right situations, with the right people, and has a really good long-term vision. So I would be surprised if he's not extremely successful in whatever it is that he wants to do. Who is that show on the next? Who won the comedy? I'm not ever going to ruin my show. Red Corner, eBay, I didn't even minutes. let you in there with that, man. I know this guy, man. He's a comedian. Come on, okay. He's going he's gonna to be on either HBO or BET. You know what they say, keep it funny, baby. Hey. Keep it funny. Where there's funny, there's money. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Right? As long as it ain't funny money. Yeah, no funny money. <laughs> no, hey, don't, don't go to jail, though, man. No, nope. they don't like you in jail, young, man. man. Yeah, Red Corner. <laughs> YouTube show and comedy right here. It's my loop. M to the K show, man. You see how he's doing? Tune in. And uh, he's one of those people that is relentless in his efforts and his follow-ups, and he just he goes hard. You know, he follows up, he sends the text messages, he sends you the gifts, he knows how to set up the lunches, he knows how to talk the talk, how to walk the walk, and uh, I think he's going to be massively successful in whatever ventures he chooses to pursue, whether that's entertainment, music, business that he's doing. I hope the best for Keezy. I could say I could see him at the top of the world, or I could be realistic and say I hope he'll be at the top of the world. You never know. You know what? MK's talents, world watch out, because he's taken over. He's the type that can be very good at anything that he does, and he's a quick learner, so that's something I've always uh, admired about him to decay. What do I think MK's legacy is going to be? Oh, man, I think that guy's going to take over the fucking world. MC to decay knows how to handle business. M to decay's legacy to me will always be the person who started something. Because he, he started a lot of things that people do now. So I think M to the K's legacy has already started. And people just don't, people don't know. And the people that do know, do know. You know, I'll say that much. So funny, so hardworking. He's one of the hardest working men that I know. M to the K is a star. Every time I try to FaceTime him or call him, he's always in the middle of a production or a set. Or he's being interviewed. I ain't know he had a, an agent. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know he was doing this, 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 and that, and auditions and shit. Or his assistant will tell me, you know, he's caught up with this or caught up with that. He has his hands in so many different businesses. And so either <clears throat> one, he's gonna either just be a very good actor or have his own reality show. One, one of the two, or TV host even. That's what he actually. That's what I would need to do. You know what I'm saying? He need to go audition for some hosting shows. He. It's a great 
interviewer, a great host. First YouTuber to do it like nobody else can. The talent is unbelievable. He's able to get us in any place in the country. Uh, he's able to get us in a restaurant that is packed and doesn't have uh, reservations. And he can get us into any kind of concert. So if you want to go and uh, have MK help you out. Everybody has these visions of where they see other people or this idea of the American dream that they, that they have. But you know, sometimes I, I really believe that MK's aspirations are much greater than the things that we can even see for him. He gets people down. He mimics people. He's good at um, becoming whoever he has to be to do a prank. So I see him acting and being a big actor in 10 years and making a lot of money doing that. I see him being very successful in the corporate world. MC the K knows how to handle business. You know what I'm saying? He handled business for Monster. He handled business for Soldier. He handles business for other influential people that he knows that's important. Like he, has, he handles important business. He knows how to make a deal. He knows how to put two and two together. He knows how to cut the game out. When he he knows how to cut the funny shit out when it's time to cut the funny shit out. Like I've literally been talking to Kizzy joking around about some very immature funny shit and then he'll get right on the phone and be corporate as fuck and I look at him like nigga like what is <laughs> what was that I feel like this guy's a limit for bro really like music wise I feel like he could music because he just can't you know what I'm saying but passion wise in 10 years I see MK either being on the big screen hosting TV shows or doing something very big corporate wise. I think what M to the K's legacy is gonna be is the the guy that went all the way out for a laugh. He is no limit to where he'll go. M to the K is a legend, man. He's a legend. That's my little brother. But the guy's a legend, man. You know, sometimes I go, wow MK, look what you've done. It's M to the Kz six foot three Z. Man, I'm out here in Greece and shit. You know what I'm saying? And he, and he looks at me and he tells me things like, no, this is not enough. You know, this is not enough for me. And I, and, so, and I used to not understand that, but now I get it. You know, not sometimes people have different ideas of what the American dream actually is. So uh, whatever his is, I can only imagine what it is, but I do have full faith and confidence that he'll achieve it. I'm to the case, legacy will probably just be kind of trendsetting, he's always a little bit ahead of the curve. You know, like he was ahead of the prank curve. He was ahead of the rap, the, the, the kind of rap he was doing curve, you know? MK in 10 years, I actually see him taking over like the Jimmy Kimmel show or something big like that. You know, I think his legacy will be as uh, famous uh, for his comedy, like even more globally than he is now. But only time will tell, stay tuned. But he also, I'm always gonna remember him missing the prank opportunity. And he stopped doing rap right before that took off. Like he he moves on very quickly, you know? So I hope I hope he doesn't miss his big break as an actor. Cause he's working on that right now and he's making money doing it. He makes money doing these things, but he doesn't stick with it long enough for it to blow up crazy. So hopefully he sees that through. 100%. Over 20 years in YouTube, we've seen M to the K grow and grow. Where I think MK will be in 10 years, he's already doing it big. What do you think about that? We, talk, we, we count money, that's, what, that's all we love to do. Like, again, money can't get checks, TV checks, movie checks, YouTube checks, Google checks, ad checks, uh, PayPal checks, Shopify checks, uh, big cartel checks. Rolex, this is the young keys. You look at me now before the million. Remember this. I just got a new camera phone. Say something to my fans. Uh -huh. Say something to all my fans. Does he know you're famous? I know. Oh, what am I gonna say to you? I stay together until my son become a millionaire. Maybe he'll take care of you guys. We're gonna be stunting, we're gonna go all over the world, and my fans will be there for every step of the way.
with my dad. If you think you can't do it, it cannot be done. All praise be to God. I'm blessed. That's what we do. That's how we roll. Five cars. Fuck one. Five cars. Fifteen bitches. That's how we roll, man. Send me a message today. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd like to thank Noe, and I'd like to thank everybody who supports me. I go by the name of Scooby Scott Skelamonte. And you guys are my new best friends. Thank you for listening to a story about me. M to the K, legend. It's your boy Scoop Scoop. Peace out, y'all. Peace. Thanks for having big keys. Eh? Happy birthday, nigga. Party. <laughs> yeah. That's the tallest building in Asia. Damn, I got some, some, I got a Myanmar money. Look at how they money look. I'm rich everywhere I go. I don't know how I did it or why you guys like me. But... So he grabbing her ass and he grabbing her ass. Everything. So he touching both. He's going to grab her ass too. What's that called when, when it's like that under here? Yeah, new crib in LA. He wasn't invited. I was coaching that motherfucker. Hey, you a rapper where you work, where you work. You ain't had a show and had no concert.